CataractCoach.com, the ophthalmologist's wife. A fellow ophthalmologist says, hey, would you mind doing cataract surgery for my wife? And here's the case. It's an intumescent white cataract. Now we'll make our paracetamol here. Notice I'm making it for my right hand. We're going to put in the tripan blue dye, give this time to stain that anterior lens capsule. And when we examine this, we'll dilute it down here with balanced salt solution. Now we'll put in our viscoelastic, our dispersive agent, and let's touch the anterior lens capsule with that blunt cannula. And look, ooh, that lens is pressurized. So what are you going to do here? High risk of arginated flag sign, right? Well, let's go in with a sharp needle, 27 gauge needle, 3cc syringe going in bevel down, puncture and immediately aspirate and suck out as much of that intumescent fluid as you can, rock the nucleus a little bit, and let's see, uh, there's that fluid you pulled out of the eye. Now you've decompressed the capsule bag, so the risk here is much lower. It's not zero, but it's lower. So now it's time to make the main incision. So we'll make the main incision here by using a diamond keratome Get a nice, clean incision. And remember, while you're doing this, an ophthalmologist is watching you operate. Think about this. Now let's go back inside the eye. We're going to go ahead and grab that lens capsule and let's create that rexus. And we're very cautious, and I'm getting ready to pull it in centrally. Now, worst case scenario, I'll quickly finish this rexus and make a baby rexus. And then we can decompress and do a double rexus technique, but I'm finding out that's not really needed here. So let's continue on, and we're going to try to make a nice, about 5 millimeter caps rexus. Now, I want to be on the conservative side here, and I don't mind even a 4.5 millimeter rexus. So coming around here, and you can tell, whew, the hard part of the surgery is over. Now, for the hydrodissection, remember, you can't see the fluid wave. So I'm going to start by making a left-hand paracentesis. So the first paracentesis was solely for creation of the capsorexis. This left-hand para is going to be for my chopper. So very little, minimal hydrodissection, very little. And trying to rotate the nucleus without doing too much of that hydrodissection. Because remember, you can't see the fluid wave. And the lens nucleus rotates, so I'm basically done. Let's put a small wad of dispersive viscoelastic there. As you know, I say a small aliquot. And now we'll go with the FACO Pro. Bevel down on chop mode, flow of 40 cc's a minute, vacuum of 500 millimeters of mercury. Let's buzz in deeply with that probe. Look how deep we put the probe in all the way till the sleeve hits the nucleus. Chopper goes around the equator and boom, that thing is dense. This is not some soft white cataract. This is dense. Let's bring the first half up and we can sub chop it into smaller pieces and everything is going well. Now remember the added pressure here is, it's obviously a high risk case. It's performed on a fellow ophthalmologist's wife. So certainly he's gonna be looking at this eye in the post op period, but you also have an ophthalmologist watching you operate in real time. And you know from my previous videos, you gotta keep your cool. My heart rate here stayed low the entire time. So here's the second half of the nucleus. We've sub-chopped it, taken the pieces out nice and easy. There's going to be a challenge ahead. Stay tuned. Don't turn away just yet. So we get the rest of the nucleus down. Chopper goes in that safe position. We definitely want to preserve that posterior capsule. Don't touch it. And so now the nucleus is out. Time for the cortex removal. And what we're going to have here is you're gonna have a situation where there's some scarring on the capsule from the white cataract. So let's take out the rest of the cortex here. Let's clean up the capsule bags as best as we can. Clean up all that stuff and it looks pretty good. Now there's obviously finally a nice red reflex here, but when you try to clean up that anterior capsule rim, you're finding out that there's some fibrosis of that capsule. That posterior capsule is not perfectly clear and you're not able to remove all of these slight peripheral opacities. Now the good news there is the word peripheral. None of these opacities are there in the central visual axis, so the vision is going to be great on post-op day one, but we'd like to clear out as much of that lens material or that fibrosis or scarring as we can. 
Now let's fill up the caps or bag here with our dispersive, actually this is our cohesive viscoelastic. The cohesive one filling it up, there's the nice looking Rexus, we'll take that. Our technicians already loaded up our lens, we're using a single piece of acrylic lens here. Of course we have an intact caps or bag, and we have a normal caps or Rexus, this should go in just fine. So let's deliver that lens into the caps or bag. Nice and easy, slowly advancing it. And there it goes, that looks great. Let's get that lens to open up in the caps or bag. Now, once the lens is in the caps or bag, we can be a little more aggressive about cleaning up that anterior caps or rim or any other lens opacities that are remaining. But remember, you're probably not gonna get this lens capsule 100% clean. And that's just because of the nature of that white cataract. And so we'll take our time here, a little mucus down on the eye, we'll wipe that off. Take our time here to clear as much of the viscoelastic and as much lens material as we can, but we're not going to go crazy here. What's the balance? I don't want to break a posterior capsule from being overly aggressive while this patient's husband, who's an ophthalmologist, is watching me, right? Come on, do the math here, people. So let's be gentle here and cautious. Now, there is some lens material there underneath that optic at that nasal edge, so let's go underneath the optic. I bet I can remove that stuff, that stuff right there, top of your screen. So let's go under the optic, lift the optic up. Let's go there. There we go. Get all that stuff out of there. And again, we're cleaning it up as best as we can. We're not going to make it perfect, but we can make a 99% improvement, which will make this patient incredibly happy. So I'm happy to say that all went well with this ophthalmologist's wife. I'm always honored to have a fellow ophthalmologist entrust me with their eyes or their family's eyes. And luckily for me, we're able to stay cool and do a beautiful job. Thanks for watching.